Bert sat in the works for a few days, the men working hard to get him back to working service. He was soon ready, and the fat controller came to visit him. Hello, Bert. I hope you're doing well. Truthfully, I just want to get back to the cement works. Well, I do have a bit of good news for you then. You should be ready to go back tomorrow, but I came here to ask you something. Is it about Dodge? Yes. This might seem a little uncharacteristic of me, but have you noticed anything about him before you ended up here? I was hoping to mention this to you at some point, sir, but I saw him returning somewhere the night before my accident. Also, those points were fine the day before. I had passed over them many times, and Eagle did so just hours beforehand. Then perhaps as soon as you're back in steam, you keep a close eye on him. And so he would. Once everything was sorted, Bert went off and scurried to the cement works. When he got there, things were surprisingly running smoothly, but Dodge frowned when he saw him arriving. And things were going so well and nicely too. And what's been going on here whilst I've been gone? Ah, Bert, we've got a train bound for Olvstead. Please take it right away. Boxy here was drastically late when he took his first train last week. Had to get someone else in to do all the trips. The woman scoffed as Dodge started to get annoyed. Bert had a very smug look on his face and quickly steamed away. He was soon taking his train along the main line, the trucks twittering amongst themselves. Bert never normally listened to the trucks, but he always treated them fairly, so he decided to pry a bit. What's going on back here then? It's that Dodge. He treated us awfully. He also went off in the middle of the night with one of those vans two nights ago. Wait, two nights ago? Yeah, he came back a good few hours before dawn. He was clearly in a hurry about something. Don't know why though. That's odd, because weren't there more stolen equipment two days ago? The trucks, rather surprised with Bert's sudden change, quickly spoke amongst themselves again, only for one certain truck to break the silence. I watched them at Gilstock Road. They thought that they was awake, but I watched them get back towards my custom van. I thought I spotted you on my train, Pierce. You told me. The old truck told Bert everything. And by the time he was done, the red industrial tank was almost in pure anger. Guys, did I just make friends with a steam engine? I suppose. Woohoo! I did it! On his return, he was to go back to Kelsfort Road and pick up some extra trucks that had been dropped off. Did he really do that? He worked out at Crosby Yards for a few years before coming here. But now he's quiet and brooding. Can't say I blame him. Bert was slowly shunting his train together for the cement works when there was a familiar whistle.
Because Donald had trucks bound for Rolf's castle, Bert went about shunting them together on his train. Once Donald soon left the section, Bert followed not long after, dragging his long train off and onto the cement works. The signal box for the junction towards the cement works was rather awkward. There was no good view on either side, and there were no signals either, so if a newly scheduled train was there, the signalman had to be notified, otherwise there would be a mess up of the timetable altogether. But this time around, it would be a lot worse than just the timetable being thrown out the window. Because Bert was running slightly late after collecting the wagons from Kelsford, Dodge was to take the next load up there himself where another engine would take it from there on out. But they both were heading for trouble. Come on lad, being sulky isn't going to help anything. That little runt caused my accident during the trucks and you're telling me to be happy about it. Oh for crying out loud. Both crew and engine were so distracted that they didn't hear Dodge coming towards them. He was rushing and wasn't looking where he was going either. And furthermore, turn the brakes! Come on! My frames, oh. Your frames, oh. My axle boxes. Shut up, Mason. You smash my friend! No! The fat controller heard the news and made his way to Rolf's castle right away. What happened here? I watched that bird run into me. He wanted to derail me. Don't lie, you didn't have a clue. Sir Topham, I will admit I heard nothing from that cement works about that diesel coming. I was aware of uh, Bert, however. That's all I needed to hear. Uh, uh, huh? Sir? You! Me! That lines up with what the men at the cement works told me. What's more, is you also thought we wouldn't look in or think about that van either. The fat controller gestured to the old LBCR van that was behind Dodge, and the grog began going pale. That would explain why the tools and equipment were found at Barrow because you took them on your run to Vickerstown only to drag them on to Barrow during the night when almost no one would have seen you. Bert started to grin. And I'm guessing it was also you that caused me accident to do this while I'm gone. You know I was awake that night, didn't you? Rubbish! I was- You can lie as much as you want, but I've spoken to enough witnesses to know the truth of your sloppy dumb plan. As soon as you're back on the rails, it's back to the mainland for you. It's couches like you that give diesels a bad name. Our Dennis and Daisy have proven this. The branch line's traffic got delayed and some services cancelled to get back upright. Bert was soon dragging the stricken diesel to Kelsfort Road and watched him take it away on a goods train for Barrow. The cement works was closed for the rest of the day, and Bert was allowed to join almost everyone else at Tidmouth. She was seeing the look on his face when a black fire came to drag him away. Oh, good riddance to another nasty little box. I swear, if we get another diesel in the future, they'd better be nicer sorts. Then you'll be glad to know that the cement works were threatening to sue British Railways, but they handed them the money before they could even reach their lawyers. The sheds burst into a ruckus of laughter and a few whistles. However, this means that they have enough money to buy an engine themselves. Does that mean I'm not needed there anymore, sir? Not in the slightest bit. You'll be staying there for a few more months to show her the ropes, but I'm certain the pair of you will get on. She'll be arriving next month, and I'm sure you can manage things there in the meantime. Well, of course, sir. But, sir, what about that rotten diesel? I got told he's been sent to Tinsley as far as I know. There, he won't be able to cause any more problems for anyone. There was a mumble of agreement, but soon followed up with a majority of smiles. Right then, if that is all, I must go and attend some... Um, uh, some important business. Uh, good day all. The fat controller left, leaving all of the engines very content, but there was something that none of them could figure out. 
Why was Dodge stealing tools and other equipment from the cement works? And why were they at Barrow? Maybe there was more to this plot than meets the eye. I wasn't expecting your call, Mr. Stone. I wasn't expecting to call you either, to be honest. We didn't realise that he would be ready today. Just doing our last checks and he should be ready for service. You've done another marvel. Whatever helps, Sir Hat. How are you feeling, Robert? I feel amazing. It feels good to run under my own power once again. Thank you for this new lease of life, Sir Charles. No need to thank me, Rob. Now then, I have a lot planned for you over the next few years. Think of yourself as mm, an ambassador. But for now, I'm setting you to work at Crosby Yards to help out Stanley and Matthew. Oh, yes, sir. Right away, sir. That's a good engine. Now, we wouldn't want to have those two waiting any longer, do we? Of course not. Now, let's get rolling.